Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en curso de inglés online tve.com y por menos de un euro al día. Hello again. Ninguno de ellos saben cuándo la ruina es. Así lo solemos decir en inglés. None of them knows or none of them know. Un purista, un gramático purista dice, none of them knows, no name, none, ninguno de ellos. Cuando son tres o más, te dicen none. Si son solo dos, se dice neither. Pero aquí estamos con tres o más. Ninguno de ellos, siendo tres o más, ninguno de ellos sabe o saben. Decimos en inglés, none, escrito none, como pares y nones. None of them, none of them, none of them know when the meeting is. Cuando la reunión es. No dice, se dice en inglés cuando es la reunión. Porque eso sería una pregunta directa. Oye, ¿cuándo es la reunión? When is the meeting? Nobody knows when the meeting is. Y de ellos, none of them know when the meeting is. Un purista diría, none of them knows. Tercera versión singular. None of them knows when the meeting is. If you want to be a purist, no problem. Me, I say, none of them know when the meeting is. Bienvenidos a la clase 138. Ahora vamos a ver la frase. None of them know when the meeting is. Ninguno de ellos saben cuándo es la reunión. Y ahora nos centraremos en la primera parte de la frase. None of them. Si estamos hablando en negativo de más de dos personas, ninguno de ellos, decimos none of them. Con la preposición uh, of, que suena como no of, pero of, con una v. None of them. Ninguno de ellos. Y si quiero decir ninguno de vosotros, ¿cómo sería? None of you. Muy bien. Y ninguno de nosotros. None of us. Muy bien. Si solo estamos hablando de dos personas, usamos otra estructura que vamos a ver más adelante. Pero ahora nos centraremos en este. None of them. Ninguno de ellos. Veamos un ejemplo. None of them like chocolate. A ninguno de ellos les gusta chocolate. None of them. None of them are coming to the meeting. Ninguno de ellos vienen a la reunión. Muy bien. None of them. Dilo todo junto. None of them. Perfecto. O sea, I mean, mis regalos de cumpleaños. Es que no me gusta ninguno. I like none of them. None of them. De todos, ninguno. None of them. Mira, las pulseras. Las pulseras, es que... ¿Cuáles son de oro? None of them. Ninguna. Pues ¿A dónde voy yo? None of them are gold. Or golden. Da igual. The earrings. The earrings. None of them are gold. Seguro que no es cierto, Diane. Mm -mm. None of them are real. The rings, los anillos, the rings, none of them are my size. Ninguno es en Italia. O sea, mira, te lo None of them are my size. None of them are my size. Es que ninguno de los cuatro, none of the four. Ok. Yo no sé, pero dilo tú. None of them are my size. Eso, que ninguno es de mi talla. Y es que mis amigos, ninguno me quiere. None of them love me. Si no, pues me comprarían regalitos. Mejor, ¿no? Pero none of them like me. Hmm. Y ninguno me conoce, por lo visto. None of them know me. O sea, no les caigo bien. None of them like me. No me quieren. None of them love me. Vamos a ver la segunda parte de la frase, que es know when, saber cuándo. Ya hemos visto know where, saber dónde, y aquí know when, con la misma pronunciación de la W esa, when, know when, know when. Muy bien. Y ahora tengo un reto para ti. Yo voy a decir una pregunta y yo quiero que tú respondes que nadie, ninguno de ellos saben la respuesta, ¿vale? Do they know when Christmas is? ¿Saben ellos cuándo es la Navidad? Y la respuesta, no. Ninguno de ellos saben cuándo es Navidad. None of them know when Christmas is. Muy bien, y no when is Christmas. Know when Christmas is. Perfecto. Vamos a ver más ejemplos. None of them know when the party is. 
Ninguno de ellos saben cuándo es la fiesta. Y ahora vamos a ver la palabra del día, que es mystery, misterio. No, ninguno de ellos saben cuándo es la fiesta, es un misterio. None of them know when the party is. It's a mystery, con la M vibrada, mystery. Yo, 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 it's me, your favorite DJ live for you. One minute. I'm checking con mis dos asistentes para ver cuándo hay que hacer el próximo show. Parece que ninguno de ellos sabe cuándo hay que hacerlo. Neither of them know when I have to do my show. First, let's practice that at home. Neither of them know when I have to do my show. Dilo tú. Eso es, neither of them know when I have to do my show. But if neither of my assistants know when I have to do my show, I don't know when I have to do it. And, well, do you know when I have to do it? Of course not. Nobody knows when my show is. And you, my fans, you need to know when you can see me. DJ Live for you. Bueno. DJ Live for you vendrá a tu ciudad pronto. Pero no sé cuándo. I just don't know when. Te recuerdo otra vez que aquí, when, no funciona como una pregunta. Por eso, después de when, tenemos when the meeting is, y no when is the meeting. None of them know when the meeting is, y no none of them know when is the meeting, como la traducción literal en español sería. Entonces, when the meeting is, porque no hay que invertir nada o no hay que poner ningún verbo auxiliar. Es una, es una frase normal. Entonces, vamos a ver más ejemplos. Do you know when the mystery meeting is? La palabra del día, misterio. ¿Sabes tú cuándo es la reunión misterioso? ¿Sabes cuándo es? Do you know when the mystery meeting is? Eso es una pregunta directa. Y ahora decimos que no, nadie sabe. None of them know when the mystery meeting is. Ninguno de ellos saben cuándo la reunión misteriosa es. Mystery, 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 la palabra del día. Y ahora vamos a ver la frase entera. None of them. Ninguno de ellos. None of them. Dilo todo junto. None of them. Y no non. None. None of them know when the meeting is. Eso es. ¿Alguien ha dicho algo sobre la reunión? The meeting? ¿Qué ha dicho? Oh. Uh, answer. Miguel, ¿sabes cuándo es la reunión? Do you know when the meeting is? Yeah, yeah, do you know when the meeting is? ¿No sabes? You don't know when the meeting is? Oh, no. Eso es, do you know when the meeting is? Do you know when the meeting is? Y no, do you know when is the meeting? Dilo, do you know when the meeting is? Good. So, do you know when the meeting is? No? Oh, and, and Rebecca? Does Rebecca know when the meeting is? No? Oh, does anyone know when the meeting is? Oh, no. Okay, okay, bye. What am I going to do? Nobody knows when the meeting is. Ah, Pilar! Pilar will know. Ah, uh, Pilar! Yeah, do you know when the meeting is? Oh, Pilar, please, tell me you know. Hello again. I asked them to be careful, but they completely ignored me. I asked... Yo digo asked. Yo me como la K de ask. Y lo, uh, lo digo como A-S-T, asked. Así lo digo yo cuando hablo inglés. I asked them... Les pedí que tuvieran cuidado. I asked them to be careful. I asked them, I asked them to be careful, but they completely ignored me. Me ignoraron, o sea, no me hicieron caso. <laughs> Ni puñetero caso, diría ese aquí. They didn't, they, they uh, paid no attention to me. They completely ignored me. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I can't believe it. I asked them to be careful, 
but they completely ignored me. They completely ignored me. In English, ignore, to ignore is no hacer caso. No significa no saber. En español sí, lo ignoro, como no, lo, no me lo sé. Pero en inglés, no hacer caso. Ignored me. Hola, bienvenidos a la clase número 138. Y la frase de hoy es... I asked them to be careful, but they completely ignored me. Que en español es... Les pedí que tuvieran cuidado, pero no me hicieron ningún caso. O me ignoraron por completo. Y vamos con el primer punto. I asked them. Les pedí. Ahora aquí tenemos el verbo to ask en el pasado simple. Every day I ask. Yesterday I asked. Asked. Fijaos bien, asked. Que no digo asked, que suena fatal, sino asked. Asked. Muy bien. Ahora, a ask le sigue la persona a la que le pedimos algo. I asked them. I asked them. Y jamás, jamás, jamás decimos I asked to them. F fatal. I asked them siempre. Ahora, vamos a ver unos ejemplos. I asked him to do it. She asked them to finish it, but they didn't. Muy bien. Nos vemos en un minuto. Uh, miss, excuse me, Miss, you, you can't... <laughs> I get no respect. I'm telling you, well, yeah, well, there's a huge sign that says no pets. Yeah, no se permiten mascotas. No pets. And you don't know, I've tried. I've been Mr. Nice Guy. I have asked people over and over not to bring pets. I've asked them to leave their pets at home. This is a shopping center. You can't bring your pets to a shopping center. And I've asked nicely. I've asked very nicely. And no one listens to me. Fijaros, he dicho asked, no axed. Porque muchos dicen axed. Pues to ax es con un hacha. Así que no hagas eso a la gente. Okay, you don't ax people. It's violent. You ask people. Y en tercer persona, en, perdona, en el pasado es asked. Asked. Ok, piensa, vamos a, a hacerlo en dos partes. Asked. Mmm, tough, ¿eh? Asked. Hay un clic al final. I asked them nicely. I asked them very nicely. I asked them, please, leave your pets at home. I asked them to get a pet sitter to take care of the pets. But nobody listens to poor Frank. <laughs> Hola, vamos con la segunda parte de la frase. To be careful, que es que tuvieran cuidado. Ahora, antes dijimos que entre ask y la persona a la que le pedimos algo no hay to, pero siempre hay que ponerlo después de la persona a la que le pedimos algo cuando nos referimos al verbo. I asked them to be careful, siempre. Ahora, al ser acusativo usamos el infinitivo, to be, to be careful. Y ahora, to be careful quiere decir tener cuidado. Nunca decimos to have care, no significa lo mismo, significa algo totalmente distinto. Así que decimos to be careful, careful. Y careful con la pronunciación de careful, que no es careful, sino careful, careful. Repite conmigo, careful. Muy bien. Y ahora vamos a ver unos ejemplos. They told us to be careful. He told me to be careful and not to take risks. Y aquí tenemos la palabra del día, to take risks, que es correr riesgos. Muy bien, nos vemos en un minuto. You know, people say I'm getting a bit paranoid, but it's true, you have to be careful. Nowadays, you have to be careful. For example, if you have your wallet, you have to be careful. Don't show it to anyone. Or if you have your cards, you have to be careful. I mean, the problem is you have to be careful. I mean, look, these cards are important. You have to be careful. Anyway, we say be careful and not have careful. Be careful. Repeat with me. You have to be careful. Good. One more time. You have to be careful. Perfect. 
I went to the park the other day and there was lots of children and they were running around like mad creatures. And I said, be careful, be careful, be careful. And they weren't careful and they bumped into me. Oh, it was horrible. That's why I prefer the shopping center because in the shopping center, I can be careful. <laughs> so anyway, I was at the park Lots of children screaming and shouting and I would say, please be careful, be careful, be careful. And they weren't careful, not at all. And look what happened to my sunglasses. <sighs> because they weren't careful. See, with designer sunglasses, you have to be careful. <laughs> Ahora vamos con la tercera parte de la frase de hoy. They completely ignored me. Completely. Completamente o por completo. Y ahora, completely se pronuncia completely. Completely. Nunca se dice completely. No. Completely. Repite conmigo. Completely. Muy bien. Ahora, completely es un adverbio, por lo que va delante del verbo o delante de un adjetivo. Por ejemplo, we completely agree. Estamos de acuerdo por completo. O, I'm sorry, but I completely disagree. Perdona, pero estoy en desacuerdo completamente. Ahora, ¿cómo se dice en inglés? Se cayó y se rompió por completo. A ver, eso es. It fell and it completely broke. Muy bien, vamos con más. Oh no, he asked me to buy some butter and I completely forgot. Se me olvidó por completo. Muy bien hecho hoy y nos vemos en la siguiente clase. No! They completely ignored me and this portable heater is broken. They completely ignored me. No me hicieron caso. They completely ignored me. Some children were playing with this portable heater. They completely ignored me and now it's broken. They completely ignored all the don't touch signs. And now look, the heater's broken. The red light doesn't turn on. They completely ignored me. I told them, don't touch, don't play with the portable heater, and they completely ignored me. In fact, I know who the children are. It's the same children. They always come into the store. I tell them, don't touch anything, and they completely ignore me. And now look, they broke something. I knew it was going to happen. They always ignore me. And once again, I'm telling them, don't touch it, and they completely ignored me. Oops, it's not plugged in. Well, but anyway, one day they will come in here, and they will touch something, and they will break it. Hello again. You should be able to warn them beforehand. You should be able to warn them beforehand. Varias cosas. Warn, warn, como el pasado del verbo to wear, suena igual, pero con a, warn, warn, se pronuncia warn, es advertido en peligro. Ojo, cuidado, be careful. Beforehand es de antemano. Curioso, en español se dice de antemano, en inglés, antes mano, beforehand. Es curioso que en un, un idioma latino y otro germánico anglosajón ten, tengamos los dos la misma expresión, beforehand. ¿Qué tiene que ver la mano con anterioridad? No lo sé. Beforehand. You should be able to warn them beforehand. Should, aquí nos deberías poder. Es que should también, según se use, significa con toda probabilidad podrás. Seguramente podrás advertirles de antemano. A tiempo, vamos, de antemano. You should be able. A mí me, me da la impresión de que you should be able. You should be able to warn them beforehand. I hope so. Hi again, here we are, back together, you and me. We spend a lot of time together. Eh? Hmm, I don't know if that's good or bad, but in any case, uh, our objective is English, so listen carefully. You should be able to warn them beforehand. You should be able to warn them beforehand. You should be able, should. La L es muda en should. Should, no decimos should. You should be able to warn them. To warn is advertirles del peligro. Aviso, te aviso, oye, ojo, cuidado, to warn. Beforehand is de antemano. You should be able to warn them beforehand. Ahora, esta frase es muy interesante por un motivo que a mí me gusta. Should, se suele traducir como debe, debería, como algo con connotación moral o 
no deberías estar aquí, etc. Ahora, pero también significa con toda probabilidad. Y en este caso es así. You should be able to warn them beforehand. Is, seguramente, con toda probabilidad, podrás advertirles a tiempo, a de antemano. You should be able to. Aquí no es deberías poderles advertir. No, es seguramente podrás advertirle. Con toda probabilidad podrás advertirles. You should be able to warn them. You should be able. You should be able to warn them beforehand. Hey, how's it going? Hey, have you heard about Harriet? She wants to stop me from talking about girls. Apparently, I should be able to control myself while at work. But I should be able to speak about whatever I like. She shouldn't be able to stop me. And you should be able to do what you like as well. So tell me, I should be able to do whatever I want. Exactly, you should be able to. I mean, if I want to speak to you about girls or my adventures at the weekend or about my life, I should be able to. And Harriet shouldn't be able to stop me. I mean, she never gives me a promotion. She never increases my wages. So she shouldn't be able to control me. If I want to spend one minute of my day talking to you about my life, I should be able to. And she shouldn't be able to stop me. <sighs> to be honest, I should be able to be, be myself. I should be able to talk about whatever I like. I, I should be able to be me. You should, yeah, you should. You should, además de deberías o debes, según el uso. Should is uh, seguramente. Seguramente estarán llegando ya. They should be arriving now. They should be, deberían ya. Seguramente ya están. They should be here. They should be here. O sea, no es que deberí, deberían, debieran estar. Sin embargo, um, seguramente están ya. They should be here. Right now, let's see. 12 o'clock? Well, well, they should be here. Uh, Mark, can you see if they're here? They should be here by now. Yeah. Okay. Now they should be able to warn them. They should be able to warn them. To warn. To warn. Warn is como los luces de aviso. Warning lights. To warn is advertir. Avisar. Cuando hay consecuencias negativas o sobre todo peligros inminentes. They should be able to warn them. I'm warning you. If you don't learn English, I'm coming after you with an axe. You, so I'm warning you, be careful, my friend. Be careful, watch out. I'm warning you. To warn is always avisar de un peligro. No avisar como consejo, de un peligro. George, I'm warning you. If you don't finish your work on time today, you're going to have to take a cut in your wages. That's right, I'm warning you, okay? I'm just warning my staff, George, Mike, and Margaret, that they need to do their jobs properly or else they're going to have problems. That's right, it's good managerial skills to warn your staff every so often. Repeat that with me, it's good to warn your staff every so often. So, I'm warning them right now. That's right, George, remember, if you don't finish all your work today, you're gonna have to take a cut in your wages. I am warning you, now hold on just a minute. Mike, did you hear me? If you don't take out the garbage, I'm warning you, there's going to be a disciplinary meeting. I'm warning you, Mike, you better take out the garbage before you leave. Now, hold on just a second. Margaret, you need to clean all the rooms by 12 o'clock. And if you don't clean them all by 12 o'clock, don't come back tomorrow. I'm warning you. I'm warning you, get all those rooms cleaned by 12 o'clock. Now, hold on just a minute. George, are you there? George, I'm trying to warn them all. I'm warning all of them, but I'm not sure if they're taking me seriously. But I'm warning, Mike, George, and Margaret. Hello again, part three, are you ready? You should be able to warn them beforehand. You should be able to warn them. You should, seguramente podrás advertirles de antemano, o a tiempo en este caso. Beforehand, curiosa expresión. Pero lo curioso es que en español hay una expresión igual, de antemano. ¿Qué te viene, qué Tiene que ver la mano con cosas de antes. No lo entiendo. De antemano no tiene sentido, pero en inglés incluso hacemos lo mismo. Beforehand. Antes que mano. Antes de mano. Beforehand. Todo junto. Una sola palabra. Beforehand. 
It's exactly the same as the antimano in Spanish. Interesting. Latin language, Germanic language, but the same expression, the antimano. We should be able to warn them beforehand. Okay? Okay. Now, the word of the day. Rain. You know, lluvia is R-E-I-G-N. R-E-I-G-N, el reinado. Un reinado. The rain. The longest rain in the history of Spain, I think, is Philip IV. 47 years, 42 years, a rain, a very long rain. His rain, su reinado, rain. Did you hear about the party? Hmm? In that room back there last night? Well, let me tell you. George and Felicity and Mike are in big trouble because they had a party and they didn't tell Harriet beforehand. They should have told her beforehand. Beforehand is como decimos de antemano. Beforehand. Beforehand. They should have told her beforehand. Well, as you can imagine, Harriet went crazy. If they had told her beforehand, it wouldn't have been so bad. And I wish they'd told me beforehand. I had to clean the room afterwards. <laughs> well, look, a little secret between you and me, okay? Between you and me. I did. I did know about the party beforehand. In fact, I was invited. I was invited beforehand and Harriet wasn't. But don't tell her anything. If she knew that I knew about the party beforehand, <sighs> don't tell her anything. I did not know beforehand. Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en curso de inglés online tv.com y por menos de un euro al día.